We're both in the picture. Okay, what? We're both in the picture. Good. We're ready to go. Yeah, we have to review the tour to ski races from Lenzerheide. Review tour to ski. Yeah. First two stages. Right, right. Lenzerheide, Switzerland. Lenzerheide, that's yep. it. That's it. That's what yeah, we're Let's that's start we're with the uh, first, first day, the disaster. I have nightmares about days like <laughs> the that. waxing. The, I, I, you know, this just occurred to me that uh, well, there's several points I'd like to make on this waxing. I think waxing kick for a classic race. A lot of people think, oh gosh, there are two waxes you got to blah blah blah. blah. I think you're assured of more success when you're waxing kick kick wax because the skiers get a chance to go out and try it. And if it's slipping, they come in and say, ah! Or if it's too much kick, they come in and say, shorten the kick zone or something like that. And so the skiers have some input into the waxing. Now, as I understand it, when they put on glide wax, the testers go out, they test it, and they test it around. Da, 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 da. This is fast, and so they wax them, hand them to the racer, here you are. Is that the way it works? Yeah, that's pretty much the way it works. But it, I, even so, even if you sent the racers out to test the glide wax ahead of time, they're not working on a balance between kick and glide. Oh, I mean, no, that's with, right. With kick wax, yeah. you send the racer out. If they don't have enough kick, they come back for more kick. Sure. Or if they feel like they could give away a little kick for some speed, they can ask to that's steer right. the balance exactly. a little bit. That's right. But when you're only working on one end of the spectrum, there's no trade-off. It's really hard to test for absolute performance and glide until you get into the race and start yeah. getting your butt kicked. <laughs> That's right. You can't go up to the Norwegian teams and to a couple of skiers and say, hey, let's compare glide wax here. Right. And, oh, yours right. are faster. What are yeah. you using, by yeah. the way? <laughs> what you can do, however, is uh, look at your test protocols and what most of the teams do are paired glide outs on a gradual downhill. And the, yeah. the testing protocols that they use are efficient. They can compare waxes quickly, pick winners quickly, put a lot of material on the snow very quickly, but they tend to evaluate the skis only in the objective terms that they can very quickly. And those are half weight, relatively low speed glide outs in a controlled area. They don't often test the ski under pressure, under full weight. Yeah. And this is where I feel like I've seen a couple of really big misses. For instance, Sophie in the team sprint, the skis that she were, was on were terrible as soon as she put weight on the ski and tried to load it and yeah. push through it. Just, they, they just died. This is very tricky because, you know, even I, when was the last time I tested wax with somebody with the U.S. ski team, FIS, I guess, in 88, but Dan Simino was along and we had a speed trap and we were testing the speed on four pairs of skis. And the speed trap. And so we went through, bing, 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 bing. One, two, three, four, we ranked them. And we said, let's try it at a different speed. We'll go faster. So we climbed up higher and went through. One, two, three, four, bing, 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 bing. The results were exactly reversed. <laughs> and so yeah. the speed that you use is a big factor. For sure. And if, what do you do? Do you want, do you want, I, well, I don't know. I think I want speed at, a yeah, good glide at high speed. So when you get a run out, you're tucked in there and you get a nice run out. But well, this is very difficult. It depends on the event format. We well, have right. to we have to look at uh, how the race is going to be conducted. If it's a head to head race, a mass start format, or yeah, or, a, or an event where people are going to be comparing side by side, yeah. you can't beat the psychology of gliding past someone. That's right. <laughs> That, then you know you have fast skis and they feel fast on the uphills. Yeah. But if you're in an individual start, we have to look at the oh, skis yeah. as though you're... Uh, well, you're, you need to take into consideration the average speed around the course. And Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Well, so put it this way. I don't if think that if works either. If, yeah. you're in a, if you're in a class, if you're testing for classic, you're testing for speed in classic. Well, that's... Yeah. Okay, so let's think of it this way. You're testing for speed in classic. Do you test, uh, do you just pick the fastest one, or do you pick the one that you can also climb uphill on? Oh, yeah. You got right. Climb. Okay. Well, my point about skate is if you're only picking for the high-speed downhills, you might have skis that are very hard to climb uphill yeah. on. That's right. Well, the other thing, the other thing <coughs> on this testing is uh, 
I know the Swiss did this. I never was able to do it because I was waxing. I was all alone. I didn't have any help, no testers, no nothing. But the Swiss, Uli Wenger, my friend, told me, he said, yeah, well, we put the wax on, then we go ski 10 kilometers on it to see how it lasts. I have a hunch that our wax on Saturday there at, at uh, Lenzerheider may be uh, degraded after the first lap because it didn't last. Oh, uh, it was already bad in the first lap. They, was, yeah. That was a colossal miss. Yeah. And, and I don't, I'm not being hard on anyone to say that, but that, that was a big, big miss yeah. on multiple levels. There wasn't one thing wrong with that setup. I've seen yeah. this happen before. I've been part of it before. I have nightmares about these kind of days yeah. where you wake up and you you head off down a path and you're going the wrong direction. <laughs> and you make down. all the right choices going the wrong direction yeah, yeah. and you end up in the wrong place. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a huge miss. And really the character of the team is determined by how they respond. Sure. And I have to give a lot of credit to the WAC staff and the coaching staff for coming straight out and saying, "Yeah, that's we right. screwed up. Yeah, that's the skis good. were terrible. Yeah. The athletes are in great shape. This has not always been the case. I have personally witnessed a bunch of circumstances where the skis were very bad and the staff didn't want to talk about it <laughs> and <laughs> certainly <laughs> didn't want to uh, <laughs> remove any culpability from the athletes for a bad day. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a real change, and this is really important. That's and I good. think that if we come out of this having rescued a good result, and let's be clear, that was a potentially very expensive mistake. If you look at the prize money that's on the line for a Jesse Diggins or a Sadie Bjornsson at the end yeah. of this tour, that yeah. could have been many thousands of dollars of mistake. So yeah, We'll see how they do. Well, we'll see yeah. how they do. But yeah. if, they rescue, if they rescue a good result, then a lot of that is going to come down to the coaching staff, um, standing up and saying, that was on us. You guys yep. are in great shape. Yep. Those athletes went to the front and skied like they belong there. That's what I want to see. Yeah. I want to see Jesse and Sadie start yeah. in the front row and immediately go around Yohog and say, no, you, you don't get to <laughs> dictate this thing. We're going to, you know, that's what we want to see. Yeah. There's a time, there was a time, when I would have expected the ski team to say, oh, they paced it wrong, they went out too hard. Yeah. But that's what you want. You yeah. want your best athletes to go out hard. And what happens is you go out there. It's a skate race. You don't know. It's not like classic where you're slipping or icing. You know, there's no immediate feedback. Yeah. You're just going, damn, this is hard. Yeah. But you know you're among the best in the world, so you're skiing among the best in the world. And 3K in, when it turns out you've been working 20% harder, you're really screwed. And that's, yeah. that's how you take, uh, you know, Diggs and Sadie yeah. from what might have been a top 15 if they had skied conservatively yeah. and shoved him back to uh, yeah, 30. Well, that was too bad. Whereas, you know, Rosie didn't have as good a start position. Yeah. She recognized that her skis weren't great, and she she appeared to settle in and just yeah. make the best of the day yeah. and yeah. salvage to 20th, so yeah, good for true. her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, the next day was very good. Gee, we did well. Did they spring. fix it or what? First, <laughs> what was it, first, third, and fourth or something? Yeah, uh, qualifiers, yeah. And seventh? Yeah, something like four that. Of the four of the seven. top ten. Four, four of the top seven. Yeah, that, that's kind of scary for some of the other teams. That was good. That was great. And the final, that, that oh, no, that wasn't it. That was another final. The, uh, that, this is what happened. Sophie got into the semifinals, and uh, she finished fifth. No chance of qualifying for the finals. Uh, her time, I think, was faster than... Anybody else is in the other semifinal. Sure. That's, that's, that's what happens. That's when, life in the first yeah, that's, semifinal. That's life in that's the uh, sprint business. That's, that's tough. That first semi is usually, could be the final, you know? Yeah. That's how yeah. it plays out. They could And you, see, you see situations where uh, guys in the later quarters will sort of choose their finishing position. For instance, in that race, you saw Paul Goldberg put on the brakes right before the finish yeah. in his quarter because he wanted to pick his semi and he made Bolshinov go through, to, which put Bolshin off are, into the second right. semi. Are the, uh, yes, are the uh, spots for the semis predetermined? Yes. They are. Yes, they Okay. Are. How do they get them? How do they decide them? Do you know offhand? There are, there's some know. formula. This is, is, this is when you watch, 
Chris Grover at a sprint is brilliant because he has this stuff so wired. He knows exactly, you know, what the tactics are. These yeah. guys are so pro about these sprint days. We yeah. watch them at home when we take it for granted, but there's a lot of uh, have to consideration be. that have goes to into these. Yeah. But I wonder, is the predetermined system uh, stack a lot of fast people in the first semi? Well, yeah, it's, it, the, the predetermined system is just the system, but because of the recovery times, the first semi has a big advantage oh, in terms good. of the amount of recovery time before the final. Well, that's true. Particularly yes. for the men, because the men only have one women's final yeah. before their final, <coughs> whereas the women, when they go first, <coughs> finish their semis, and then there's two men's semifinals yeah, before yeah, the women's final. Time. So that, uh, that second semi is a bad place to find yourself yeah. unless, uh, well, it, Typically, I, w I bet 80% of the time, the winner comes from the first semifinal. Probably. Probably, yeah. Well, <coughs> but that was that was, that was was a pretty good weekend. It ended up pretty well. Now we moved it to It ended Tobol. up pretty well, but we're not moving to Toe Block yet because I'm not satisfied. You what? I am not satisfied with, no. with the weekend. We no. had four in the top seven in qualifying. Full credit to the service team for clearly yeah. getting it right yeah. for, for the day, at least for qualifying. <coughs> and the skis looked <coughs> the skis looked fine. Pardon me, I got a cold. <coughs> the skis looked fine in the heats that we watched, except for Kern's skis. <coughs> Julia's yeah. skis did not look good. But but uh, the skis looked good on the day for the team. But uh, two in the final and no podium positions in a in a tour de ski sprint in Middle Europe, in Lanzarote. Yeah. That's a disappointment. Yeah. I and I feel that uh, both Jesse and Sadie have so many cards in play and were really skiing for overall places and were skiing to make sure they advanced, not to make sure they won. Mm -hmm. It's just 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 my impression. Uh, Diggins, for instance, just making it hard right from the get-go in her quarter uh, to, uh, to, you know, make sure she advanced at least on Lucky Loser. Um, tactically, they weren't skiing like people who were going to end up on the podium on the day. They were skiing like people who needed to make it to the final, and they did. Mm -hmm. Sophie, I thought, looked better than anyone from our team on the day. She was in the right place at the right time, and she made the mistake as we were watching that I saw everyone make trying to jam tight inside on that last corner yeah. and it was really hard to carry speed yeah. there was one person all day long who made a successful move to the inside <coughs> that was Claybull wasn't that it? was Claybull <laughs> now are you still going to tell me that he's not in shape uh, he's rounding into shape he's rounding, yeah, into, he's shape. rounding into shape when he started well, he, you know you were here he was in the semi or something he took off like he's going to a picnic. Mm. Yeah, he's missing the picnic basket, but he just took sixth place. I said, this shows a certain amount of confidence. Yeah, so I guess he's back. He's back. <laughs> That's, that was good. He, he never went anywhere. He just skipped a race or two. Yeah. I think he's been in very good shape all along. And that was, that was um, I'm no big Claybo fan. I prefer when somebody who's not Norwegian or Russian does well. Yeah. Honestly, the sport's more fun to watch when it's not the Norwegians and Russians. <coughs> nice right. having Lampic win the women's. That's, yeah, that's sure. A, that, that women's sprint was great. And the Swedes, who usually dominate, didn't, yeah. didn't really show yeah, up there. They didn't show up. But you have to appreciate uh, a Claybo who is just has got such a head on his shoulders and skis so tactically well. And I, I found yeah. myself thinking, like, this guy is dominant. Why do I enjoy watching him when I don't enjoy watching Johan just ski off the yeah. front of the women's race? Yeah. And it's, it's because he's not the biggest. He doesn't have the biggest motor. He's not the strongest. He's the best on his feet, and he's got the best head. Mm. He understands how to win races yeah. mentally yeah. and tactically like almost no one. And it's absolute entertainment to watch. Johan knows how to win, too. Yeah, he just go harder than everybody else. Has. <laughs> I don't it's... enjoy watching him. <laughs> That's the problem. Well, look, I'll, on the uh, on the toe black race, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'll uh, skate, isn't it? I'll take uh, Yoha and give you the rest of the field for a beer. Oh, yeah, you're really generous. How's that? Is that really generous? generous? <laughs> the, we'll see how that goes. Well, we hope 
Rosie and, I mean, uh, well, Rosie too, but yeah. Jesse and, and uh, Sadie. Come this back. is going to be interesting. Toe block can be good for them. Jesse has won an individual start skate in toe block in the past. Is that right? And during ahead. the tour, I think it was a 5K maybe. Good. But, uh, but they're, and I think Sadie's had a great result, maybe a podium there as well. Um, this is good, good courses for them. But for my money, they will move up quite a lot. The what's going to stand between those two and a potential overall podium at the end of the tour is the Mass Start Classic in Val de Fiel. That's a brutal, brutal yeah. event, uh -huh. and we don't have a history of producing awesome performances. Yeah, that'll be there. tough. That's that's a tough one. Is that five or ten? Ten k. Ten k. It'll be at least. Uh, three lap race, possibly a four lap race. Yeah. Just climbing out of the stadium there yeah. is a ball buster. It's yeah, brutal. That. That's it's tough. a really, really hard place, and uh, waxing's tricky. I've I've never felt like the U.S. team really climbed on top of kick waxing at Valley Fiam, <coughs> at least since uh, Jesus. When was Chris fourth in world championship? Randall, there. what? Yeah. Rand yeah. No, it's uh, it's a tough place. So that one I'm most nervous about. But toe block, I think we're gonna have a couple good days. I think I think we're gonna yeah. have a lot of fun watching those. Yeah, it'll be good. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see tomorrow morning. Right. So you're gonna come at nine. You're not gonna come and watch the men's race. Well, if I get up, I'll come down. But I, you know. Yeah. Like you, I'm going to fight this cough. Well, you better call me if you're coming down. I might not set an alarm. Oh, for the are you not gonna get up? Well, I will if you're gonna show oh, up. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I don't want to call you and wake you up. Well, call me. If you're coming down, you better call me and wake me up. Otherwise, you're not going to okay. have any way to watch that. Right, yeah, you right, have to make your own right, coffee. All right. Yeah, so call me on your way out the door if you're coming down for the men. Okay. Good. Good. It's a plan. We'll do that. Good. Okay, go. Okay.